Thanks to the machinations of Darth Sidious, the Clone Wars were a stalemate for most of their duration. For years, the Republic and the CIS fought a back and forth war, each capturing and losing territory in turn. Until the Battle of Coruscant, most of the galaxy was under the impression that there was no end to the war in sight. But starting in late 20 BBY, the truth was that the Republic was winning. Slowly but surely, the Republic had begun to centralize and rally its industrial might. And by the start of 19 BBY, it was pushing Separatist forces back on every front, bringing the fight to the Rimwood strongholds of the Confederacy. These grueling final months of the Clone Wars were known as the Outer Rim Sieges, and in today's extra long episode, we'll be telling the full story of this bloody chapter of the war. Attention, Sergeant on deck! At the start of the Clone Wars, neither the Galactic Republic nor the Confederacy of Independent Systems was fully prepared for war. The corporate factions of the Separatist Council had pulled their droid armies to form a unified CIS military only hours before the initial Republic assault on Genosis, while the Republic had to figure out how to deploy, supply and command a clone army that had pretty much just been dropped into its lap. As a result, the first few months of the Clone Wars were dominated by surgical strikes into enemy territory while both sides tried to organize and arrange support for their new militaries. The CIS actually got its Sith together first. Thanks to General Grievous, the CIS was the first to organize its military into a cohesive unit with a clear overarching strategy late in 22 BBY, and they immediately began pressing their advantage against the Republic. Grievous largely left the defense of Separatist space to local planetary security forces and began a constant offensive, attacking targets of opportunity across the Republic. While the Separatists' industrial worlds kept churning out warships and battle droids, Grievous threw fleets at any potential weak point he saw in Republic defenses, keeping the Grand Army of the Republic disorganized and on the defensive. In early 20 BBY, this strategy even allowed Grievous to launch an assault on the core worlds themselves, conquering Duro and 25 other key Republic strongholds. But even as the Confederacy won its most decisive victories of the war, the beginning of the end was at hand. It took much longer for the Republic to fully commit its industrial base to the war effort, but once it did, it was over for the CIS. The CIS had only ever controlled scattered swathes of Separatist space. It had tens of thousands of member systems, but it was still much smaller than the Republic. Additionally, even though a significant portion of the CIS was composed by corporate-owned industrial worlds, the Republic's industrial base was still dramatically larger. The war strained Separatist industry to its limits, while Loyalist industry was still warming up. Once the Republic had rallied its industrial base, and once the Senate all but completely abdicated control of the war effort to the Jedi and the Supreme Chancellor, the tide began to turn. In 20 BBY, a series of Republic counterattacks all but drove Separatist forces out of the core and colonies. The Republic won major victories at Rendili, Duro, Balmora, and Kominor, and it was making major strides in the Rim as well. In the final weeks of 20 BBY, the Republic had attained enough of an advantage to commit most of its forces to an all-out assault against the Confederacy's Rimwood territories in six theatres. Thus began the Outer Rim Sieges. The Republic divided up the Outer Rim Sieges into six theatres, each named for a key Separatist world in each region. In the Northern Outer Rim, what had originally been a long strip of Separatist space had been split into two enclaves. The western one, located around the central worlds of the intergalactic banking clan, became the Maegido Theatre, while the other, located on the outer Hidian, became the Sereno Theatre. Near the Sereno Theatre, and just north of Hut Space, was the Felucia Theatre, centred around the foundry of the Confederacy, a string of key separatist industrial worlds in the mid and outer rims. This pocket of separatist space was much reduced from what it had been earlier in the war but it was still the most organized and well-defended patch of Separatist territory. 
In the galaxy's southern half, a midroom separatist enclave on the Karelian run had been completely reconquered, freeing up Republic forces to begin sieges of separate-destroyed factories in the Siskine Theater at the end of the route. Meanwhile, what had once been a single separatist territory along the rumored trade route had been split up and much reduced, divided into the Praesitlin Theater in the Outer Rim and the Yagdul Theater, which contained the CIS's last strongholds in the Inner Rim and Expansion region. A few other scattered pockets of separatist territory remained, but with the notable exception of Nemoidian space, none were very significant. For the final six months of the war, the Republic deployed most of its forces, including most of the Jedi Order, to extensive campaigns in these regions, steadily whittling down the Separatist war machine. Grievous responded by continuing his campaign of terror offensives into Republic space. These accomplished little, tactically speaking, but they successfully terrified Loyalists and muddied the galaxy's perception of the way the war was going leaving most civilians in doubt that the war had actually turned in the Republic's favor. But steadily, system by system, the Confederacy of Independent Systems was being dismantled, and they were only able to hide it for so long. The Outer Rim sieges technically began with a string of major Republic victories at Ord Radama, Ryloth, and Ossus, but the campaign only began in earnest with the Battle of Boz Pity, in which a Jedi-led strike force struck deep into Separatist territory in the Felucia Theater, attacking a major Separatist stronghold in a bid to decapitate Separatist military leadership. The Jedi failed to stop Count Dooku and General Grievous from escaping Boz Pity, but they and the GAR reinforcements sent after them were ultimately able to take the planet, trouncing a massive Separatist fleet in orbit and capturing an important command outpost. Boz Pity was transformed into a Republic staging ground in the heart of Separatist space, and from it, Republic forces moved on to Seleucami and other vital Separatist strongholds. After Boz Pity, the floodgates opened and Republic forces began advancing on six fronts. We're going to tackle the sieges by theatre so that it's easy to keep track of things, beginning with the Megiddo Theatre. In the Megiddo Theatre, the Confederacy controlled a swath of space in the new territories dominated by the Intergalactic Banking Clan, one of the most powerful Separatist Council factions. This region had been a hotspot for most of the Clone Wars, as the capital worlds of the IGBC were a major Republic target, and even before the Outer Rim sieges began, this was one of the conflict's bloodiest theatres. By the end of 20 BBY, the Republic had already captured two vital hyperspace crossroads, one at Agamar, and one near the IGBC capital at Munilinst. Starting in 21 BBY, Republic forces in the region had been embroiled in a campaign on Maigito, which proved to be the longest battle of the Clone Wars. As the name suggests, Republic efforts in the Maigito Theatre were mostly focused on winning the Battle of Maigito. Ever since the Republic captured Munilinst, Megiddo had become the Confederacy's most important IGBC stronghold, and the planet's vast mineral reserves and banking clan vaults supported virtually every Separatist fleet in the region. For over a year, the Confederacy had been fighting tooth and nail to keep Megiddo, but until the start of the Outer Rim sieges, the Republic hadn't made all that much progress on the icy world. Other important targets in the region included the agricultural planet Garki and the mineral-rich Ord Trussi. During the Outer Rim sieges, the bulk of Republic forces advanced up the Entrala route toward Munilinst and Megiddo. For most of the sieges, the Republic appears to have only made minimal progress in the region and some sources indicate that at some point, Munilinst might have been briefly retaken by the Separatists before being conquered again by Republic forces. Progress on Maigito, on the other hand, was slow, and Republic reinforcements to the Maigito system were regularly interrupted by Separatist forces raiding the Entrala route. Toward the end of the Clone Wars, however, this holding pattern broke, and the Republic began to make significant progress. During the final month of the Outer Rim sieges, Plo Koon won a decisive naval battle against Separatist forces at Wallander freeing up the Entrala route and allowing Kiari Mundi and the Galactic Marines to join the fights on Maigito. With the assistance of the 501st Legion, a detachment of which was dispatched to Maigito to carry out a secret mission for the Supreme Chancellor, 
Mundi and his forces finally began to make headway on Megiddo, though they still faced stiff resistance and suffered heavy casualties along the way. Mundi and the Galactic Marines were soon joined by dozens of other GAR detachments from the Core Worlds, which had been deployed as part of a push to finally take the planet in the Clone Wars' final days. The Battle of Megiddo wasn't the only major campaign in the Megiddo Theatre, however. Toward the end of the sieges, the Jedi General Travis led his armies on a campaign through the Separatist-aligned Cassandran Worlds, a string of worlds coreward of Megiddo. Moving from the Entrala run, Travis took the industrial planets Monhadul, New Baxtra, and Bitu before laying siege to Garki, which Republic forces eventually captured at the very end of the war. Around the same time, Republic forces under Jedi General Garin Muln also attacked the planet Acheron in the remote Red Twin system, which was fiercely defended by the local Separatists. The battles of Acheron, Garki, and Megiddo were all ongoing by the time of the Battle of Coruscant, making the Megiddo Theatre one of the most active battlefronts of the Outer Rim sieges. In contrast to the bloody slog of the Megiddo Theatre, the neighbouring Sereno Theatre was perhaps the calmest battlefront of the Outer Rim sieges. And this theatre was centred around the Separatist Enclave on the Outer Hydean Way, a region historically known for being politically turbulent. This stretch of Separatist space could be considered the political heart of the Confederacy, home to many prominent and influential worlds who had seceded over corruption and overreach in the Galactic Senate. These powerful Separatist political centres included Count Dooku's homeworld, Sereno, for which the theatre was named, as well as the merchant planet Selenon, the wealthy worlds of the Seotric hegemony, and Telos IV. Republic forces in this region prioritised taking these political power brokers, especially Sereno and Selenon. Due to the political value this region had to the Confederacy, the Republic focused on the Sereno theatre early in the Outer Rim sieges. One of the very first battles of the offensive was the Battle of Ord Radama, for example, in which Republic forces moved along the edge of the Radama Void to besiege a key Separatist fortress world. There, a Jedi-led fleet hoped to break through the rear guard of CIS forces in the Sereno Theatre, allowing them to push towards Sereno itself. About a month after the start of the Battle of Ord Radama, Republic forces advancing down the Hydean Way attacked New Bornelix as part of a push towards Selenon. On New Bornelix, Republic forces faced stiff resistance and suffered heavy casualties in combat against the Separatist-aligned Mandalorian Protectors, who carried out several lightning strikes against Republic forces during the battle. But Republic forces fought fiercely as well, most notably the Galactic Marines, who, on the orders of Commander Bakara, engaged a column of super battle droids in melee combat after the weapon systems on their prototype power suits failed. It's unknown whether the Republic won the Battle of Ord Radama or the Battle of New Bornelix, but either way, action in the theatre began to die down after the first few months of the sieges. Those two battles are the only documented engagements in the Sereno Theatre in Legends, perhaps indicating that the other theatres were prioritised as the Outer Rim sieges went on. There's no indication that Republic forces actually reached Selenon or Sereno before the end of the war, and even after the Empire moved in to occupy this region, many of the Sereno Theatre's local Separatists fought on, waging a brief war against the Imperial Navy in the Seotric hegemony. On the other side of the Radama Void, however, was the Felucia Theatre, the bloodiest and most active theatre of the Outer Rim sieges. The Felucia Theatre contained the largest remaining pocket of Separatist space located at the end of the Polemian trade route. Although it had been significantly reduced in size over the course of the war, it still contained dozens of vital worlds. The heart of this region was known as the Foundry of the Confederacy because it contained the bulk of the Confederacy's industrial worlds. Important targets in this region included the Commerce Guild capital of Felucia, the Techno Union stronghold of Seleucami, the Corporate Alliance capital of Mercana, the politically powerful Sai Mirth, and the wealthy worlds of the Tyon Cluster, most notably Raxus Secundus, the capital of the CIS. From the beginning of the Clone Wars, the Republic had fought a back and forth war between Lentils and Centaurus on the Polemian, and by the time of the Outer Rim sieges, 
Republic forces had finally broken through all the way to Centaurus. From there, Republic forces poured into the foundry of the Confederacy, running roughshod across the entire region. But the Confederacy fought hard to keep the region, with local forces carrying out regular counter-offensives, making it difficult for the Republic to hold any territory in the region. As with the neighbouring Sereno Theatre, two of the very first battles of the Adarim sieges happened in the Felucia Theatre, the Battle of Ossus and the Battle of Bozpiti. Ossus, the ruined former Jedi homeworld, had fallen to the Confederacy at the start of the war. It became the site of a major Separatist base, which Republic forces attacked at the very start of the sieges. The Battle of Bozpiti, which we've already discussed, happened shortly afterwards, and Bozpiti became a vital staging ground for Republic units fighting in the Felucia Theatre, particularly in the Siege of Seleucami. Beginning shortly after the Battle of Bozpiti, the Siege of Seleucami was one of the longest and most grueling battles of the Outer Rim sieges, and of the Clone Wars as a whole for that matter. On Seleucami, dozens of Jedi and three elite clone corps fought for five bloody months against the Morgukai Shadow Army, a Separatist clone army bred in the lava caves beneath one of Seleucami's craters. This army was composed of clones of the Nikto warrior Bok, the last of the legendary Morgukai warrior cult. These clones were trained in Jedi killing techniques by Bok and a team of Anzati assassins, and equipped with lightsaber resistance Cortosis weapons. Republic forces on Seleucami were tasked with preventing them from escaping the planet at all costs. On the other end of the Felucia Theatre was Felucia itself, which was the site of another long and extremely bloody battle. This treacherous wild world was dotted with key commerce guild bases, and the Republic invested heavily in capturing it, only for its armies to be devastated by the nightmarish conditions of the Felucian fungus jungles. For most of the Adarim sieges, the battles on Seleucami and Felucia were the focal points of the Republic offensive in this region nightmarish meat grinders into which thousands of clones were thrown. In the region between Felucia and Seleucami, the foundry of the Confederacy was ripped apart by constant fighting. The mining planet Jabim, which had been the site of a bloody Republic defeat earlier in the war, was once more attacked by Republic forces, which managed to capture the rainy mud ball this time round. Charos IV, home to the creators of the Vulture Droid, also fell to Republic forces at some point, though we don't know if this was during the Adarim sieges or if it happened earlier. Because the loss of these industrial worlds left the Confederacy increasingly strapped for resources, local Separatist forces seized control of the mineral-rich Baldemnik Midway through the Adarim sieges, a planet in the region home to vast Cortosis reserves that the Confederacy had previously mostly left alone. When Republic forces learned of this, they tried to capture Baldemnik, only for the native Conmi to rise up against both sides and force both the Republic and the Confederacy to get the hell off their homeworld. As the Outer Rim sieges dragged on, the members of the Separatist Council were forced to flee their capitals and homeworlds. Eventually, they formed a fleet led by General Grievous from the Invisible Hand. Initially, Grievous planned to retake the minor industrial world Belderone for the Council to shelter on, but this plan fell through when it was inadvertently leaked to the Jedi. The attack on Belderone failed, and Grievous ended up taking the Council to the Presitlin Theatre instead, which was more secure. The Battle of Belderone happened five months into the Outer Rim sieges, when the Republic began to make considerable progress in the Felucia Theatre. Around this time, the GAR deployed much of its core world garrisons to Seleucami and Felucia, which helped turn the tide in the Republic's favour on both worlds. Not long before the Battle of Coruscant, the Jedi Masters Aayla Sakura, Tholm, and Quinlan Vos infiltrated and sabotaged the Confederacy's main base on Seleucami, killing the army's commander, Dark Acolyte, Sora Bulk, and destroying the Separatists' cloning equipment. The Morgukai Shadow Army was finally defeated, albeit at a very high cost. Their base was even shelled from orbit by Republic Star Destroyers, just to be sure. Republic forces under Stas Ali continued to fight on Seleucami, attacking other Techno-Union fortresses and mopping up the scattered droid army units, 
but most of the units assigned to the siege moved on to other theatres. Master Voss moved his troops to Boz Pity, where they received much needed reinforcements before being reassigned again, while General Sakura and the 327th Star Corps joined the fight on Felucia, where they foiled a plot to poison the planet's water table and began making headway against Commerce Guild forces. In the final days of the Clone Wars, Republic forces pressed even deeper into the Felucia Theatre. Jedi General Rowan Shrine led his men in an assault on Mercana, while two other Jedi-led armies besieged the ice planet Tula and Delalt. On the other end of the Felucia Theatre, the Separatists began a campaign of their own, attempting to capture Kashyyyk, which had become a vital Republic stronghold. Separatist-backed Trandoshan gangs and their private droid armies had been harassing Kashyyyk for months, but toward the end of the war, the clone commandos of Delta Squad discovered that they were collaborating directly with General Grievous, who was planning a full-scale invasion. The Confederacy ended up attacking Kashyyyk in force, capturing most of the Wawat archipelago to use as a beachhead from which to take the rest of the planet. However, Delta Squad helped Chieftain Tarful and the local Wookiees defend Kachiro, the Wawat archipelago's main city, against the first wave of Separatist forces paving the way for Republic reinforcements to land and rally Kashyyyk's defenders at the city. Another of the more chaotic regions during the Outer Rim sieges was the Siskine Theatre. By mid-20 BBY, the Republic had driven Separatist forces from their former holdings on the Corellian Run, taking Forleen, Ando, and several other Separatist strongholds. CIS forces in the region fell back to the Outer Rim in disarray, regrouping at a scattering of foundry worlds and remote separatist holdings. This region of space, on the outer end of the Corellian run, was no man's land in practice, though the Republic, Confederacy and Huts all established significant presences out here by the end of the war. The main swath of separatist territory in the Siskine Theatre was mostly composed of Geonosian colonies and key techno-union droid factories, most notably Hypori, Siskine and Olenit. Other Separatist forces in the region had set up shop in wild space, occupying remote worlds west of the Corellian Run. Republic forces attacked Separatist holdings in the Siskine Theatre along the Corellian Run and from Rathana and Excarga, two Republic strongworlds rimward of Separatist space. This theatre was the site of another of the Outer Rim Siege's first battles, this one taking place at Ryloth, a Republic stronghold on the edge of Separatist space. The Republic held the line at Ryloth, preventing Separatist forces from advancing back up the Corellian Run, while fleets from Rothana and Excarga attacked Siskine and Telenroeg. Meanwhile, Republic forces on the Corellian Run drove the Confederacy from Lanik, a notorious shadow port out in wild space, and Ruhe, where Count Dooku had a personal estate. As its name would suggest, the focal point of the Siskine Theatre was Siskine itself, a major rallying point for Separatist forces. However, during the final month of the Outer Rim sieges, the theatre took on additional significance as the hunt for Darth Sidious led Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi to visit a number of worlds in the region. This led them to Tithe, a world the Jedi believed Sidious had ties to, which had been captured by the Republic but then promptly recaptured by the Separatists. Skywalker and Kenobi captured Tithe again but Count Dooku was able to eliminate any leads that might have led them to Sidious beforehand. After Tithe, the two also participated in a battle on nearby Nelvan, where Anakin Skywalker helped local warriors wipe out a techno-union garrison on the planet, which was performing cruel experiments on the planet's indigenous peoples. Skywalker and Kenobi were drawn away from their adventures in the Siskine Theatre by the news of the Battle of Coruscant. Around that time, Republic forces in the region were still fighting at Telenreg and possibly Siskine, while another unit was bound for a battle at Ragmar V in wild space. Although the war in the Siskine Theatre wasn't all that more eventful than the Sereno Theatre, the same can't be said about the Preisitlan Theatre at the end of the Rimmer trade route. Earlier in the war, the Confederacy had controlled most of the Rimmer, with the notable exception of the city planet Ariadu a Republic stronghold with a fanatically loyalist populace. Under the leadership of Gideon and Wilhuf Tarkin, Republic forces in the region rallied at Ariadu and fought like hell, 
staving off an endless series of separatist attacks. Eventually, they managed to push the Confederacy back, steadily reclaiming most of the Rima, including the vital separatist shipyards at Celeste. By the time of the Outer Rim sieges, Republic forces had cleared the Corwood leg of the Rima almost all the way to Yagdul, and Ariadu shifted its focus to the separatist strongholds on the Rimwood end of the route. This region of separatist space contained the shipyards of Sluis Van, the communications hub of Prey Sitlin, the Techno Union redoubt of Zagrobar, and the stronghold worlds of Triton, Klaktor 7, and Mustafa. It was one of the most well defended regions of the Confederacy, and the Republic's advance down the Rimmer was slow. CIS forces in the region rallied at Klaktor 7 and Sluis Van to resist the offensive. Early in the Outer Rim sieges, Republic forces in the Prey Sitlin Theatre launched an assault on Zagobar focused on the personal stronghold of Wat Tambor, who was on the planet at the time. Led by Jedi General Glyn Betty, Republic forces attempted to wrest the vital world from Techno Union control, but they failed due to the intervention of General Grievous, whose reinforcements slaughtered Glyn Betty's armies. The Republic was pushed back out of Zagobar and Wat Tambor escaped capture. After the failure to take Zagobar, Republic forces focused on pressing down the Rimmer. After months of hard fighting, they broke the Confederacy's lines at Klaktor 7 and besieged Triton, from which Republic forces proceeded to attack Sluis Van. Fighting on both worlds was fierce, and the outcome of neither battle is known. But Separatist forces at Sluis Van managed to prevent the Republic from pushing further into Separatist space until the final days of the war. Apart from Zagobar, Triton, and Sluis Van, there were two other notable battlefields in the Prey Sitlin sector. One was Auto, where General Nem Bees and Commander Devis fought a battle during the last week of the war. The other was Utapal, a neutral world in wild space that General Grievous conquered after the Battle of Belderone. Since Utapau was remote, and the rimward parts of Separatist space in the Presitlin Theatre were relatively safe, Grievous considered the planet a good hiding spot for the Separatist Council, at least until their new fortress on nearby Mustafa was finished. The final theatre of the Adarim sieges was the Yagdul Theatre, a small sliver of space that was all that remained of the Confederacy's holding in the Inner Rim and Expansion region. Over the course of the Clone Wars, Separatist holdings in the region were whittled down to a puny arc of territory which contained primary back to producer Thyfera, the naval stronghold Yagdul, and the grand homeworld of Kinyan. The Confederacy also maintained a number of strongholds on the Corellian trade spine Rimwoods of Kinyan, which were where all of the Republic's known campaigns in this theatre took place. We only know of three battles in the Yagdul theatre all of which took place in 20 BBY at the start of the sieges. The first was the Battle of Sarish, a catastrophic defeat for Republic forces, but this defeat was followed by two decisive Republic victories in the Battle of Tar Morden and the Battle of Bomi's Kori. At Tar Morden, the Republic captured a major Techno Union factory and warehouse, securing tens of thousands of crab droids in the process. While at Bomis Kuri, General Skywalker and Kenobi laid waste to a heavily defeated Corporate Alliance stronghold, killing General Oro Dasain in the process. For most of the Adarim sieges, the Yagdul Theatre was well defended, preventing the Republic from making much headway apart from its campaigns on the Corellian trade spine. But in the final month of the war, that suddenly changed. The region's separatist naval forces virtually vanished overnight and the Confederacy all but abandoned the entire theatre. At first, it was a mystery where all those ships had gone, but the mystery was solved when, in the sixth month of the Outer Rim sieges, the fleets of the Yagdor Theatre appeared in the skies above Coruscant. The Outer Rim sieges had never been as they seemed. As with the Clone Wars as a whole, they were orchestrated by Darth Sidious, and beneath this seemingly straightforward Republic offensive, was a sinister purpose. The sieges were a trap meant to spread the Jedi and their clone armies thin across the fringe of known space. And like every other trap city is set for the Jedi, the sieges did their job perfectly. The Jedi Order was scattered far across the stars, 
with its best and brightest isolated from each other on far-flung, war-torn hellholes. The Grand Army of the Republic was scattered as well. Over the course of the sieges, the Republic committed more and more of its forces to the campaign, leaving much of the core worlds underdefended. Five months into the campaign, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine even committed much of Coruscant's own defense fleet to the sieges, sending the Republic's vast reserve fleets to the battlefield of what he called the Triad of Evil, the most important separatist strongholds, Megiddo, Felucia, and Seleucami. This set the stage for the Confederacy's boldest offensive, an all-out attack on Coruscant. Using secret hyperspace routes through the deep core provided by Darth Sidious, General Grievous struck right at the heart of the Republic, scattering Coruscant's remaining defenders and sowing chaos across the galactic capital. Grievous had his warships spread out and target civilian orbital infrastructure, sent swarms of vulture droids to fly themselves into buildings and crowded plazas, and dispatched millions of battle droids to Coruscant's surface. His objective wasn't conquest, it was terror. For a straight week, the Confederacy ran roughshod over Coruscant, with Republic forces too tied down with the Outer Rim sieges to adequately respond. The Battle of Coruscant served the same purpose as the Campaign of Terror that Grievous had been pursuing all throughout the Outer Rim sieges. It was meant to break the will of the Loyalists. It reinforced the false impression that Grievous and Sidious had been pushing for months, that the Republic was still in a dire state, and that the Separatists were still capable of sowing destruction everywhere. To quote the Revenge of the Sith novelization, Across the remnants of the Republic, stunned beings watch in horror as the battle unfolds live on the holonet. Everyone knows the war has been going badly. Everyone knows that more Jedi are killed or captured every day, that the Grand Army of the Republic has been pushed out of system after system. But this, a strike at the very heart of the Republic, an invasion of Coruscant itself, how can this happen? It's a nightmare and no one can wake up. Obviously, the idea that the Republic was losing was wildly out of alignment with the tactical situation, but it was an impression that the Sith had deliberately created. It was all part of a plot to make the galaxy so terrified for their safety that they would celebrate the rise of a more authoritarian government, an empire. The final element of this plot came when Grievous kidnapped Supreme Chancellor Palpatine dragging him to his flagship in orbit above Coruscant. From the conning tower of the Invisible Hand, he showed off the captive Chancellor to the Holonet, driving a final dagger through the heart of every Loyalist in the galaxy. Of course, as we all know, Palpatine didn't stay captive for long. By the end of the day, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi had boarded the Invisible Hand, rescued the Chancellor, killed Count Dooku, and successfully landed the wreckage of the destroyer on Coruscant. A reserve clone army and a fleet of new Star Destroyers, secretly amassed on Palpatine's orders, joined the fight in orbit and turned the tide, trouncing Grievous' battle group and sending it back to the Outer Rim in disarray. Against all expectations, the Republic won the Battle of Coruscant, and this victory would spell doom for the CIS. The Battle of Coruscant crippled the Confederacy both strategically and politically, destroying a huge chunk of its military and eliminating its political head. Command of the Confederacy fell to General Grievous, who withdrew to Utapau to join the Separatist Council. The Republic, meanwhile, was re-energized, and the reinforcements Palpatine had commissioned for the Battle of Coruscant were immediately deployed to the Outer Rim sieges, where they began to push the offensive. In the Megiddo Theater, the Jedi tightened the noose around Megiddo, Garki, and Atrin. On Felucia, Delalt, Makana, Tula, Orto, and Telenroeg, Republic forces advanced on all fronts. A few days after the Battle of Coruscant, General Kenobi led the 7th Sky Corps in a surprise attack on Utapau in the Presitlin Theater, while Yoda, Luminara Unduli, and Quinlan Vos led the 41st Elite Corps and other Republic units to Kashyyyk, where they linked up with the Wookiee forces at Kachiro. Kashyyyk and Utapau would end up being the final battles of the Outer Rim sieges and the Clone Wars. On Kashyyyk, 
General Grievous's armies made a last-ditch offensive, aiming to capture Kachiro, while Grievous himself battled Obi-Wan Kenobi on Utapau as Pau City flooded with clone troopers and battle droids. Grievous lost his final fight on Utapau and was killed by Kenobi, and leadership of the Confederacy fell to Newt Gunray, the leader of the Separatist Council, which had fled to Mustafa. With Grievous dead and the Council hiding in a remote mining facility, the Confederacy of Independent Systems was all but defeated, and with the war all but won for the Republic, Darth Sidious was free to bring about the final stage of his grand plan. For the Outer Rim sieges had one final purpose, as described by the Revenge of the Sith novelization. What is happening right now is why the Clone Wars were fought in the first place. It is their reason for existence. The Clone Wars have always been, in and of themselves, from their very inception, the revenge of the Sith. They were irresistible bait. They took place in remote locations on planet that belonged primarily to somebody else. They were fought by expendable proxies, and they were constructed as a win-win situation. The Clone Wars were the perfect Jedi trap. By fighting it all, the Jedi lost. With the Jedi Order overextended, spread thin across the galaxy, each Jedi is alone, surrounded only by whatever clone troops they command. War itself pours darkness into the Force, deepening the cloud that limits Jedi perception. And the clones have no malice, no hatred, not the slightest ill intent that might give warning. They are only following orders. In this case, Order 66. Holdout blasters appear in clone hands. Arc 170s drop back into the tails of Jedi starfighters. ATSTs swivel their guns. Turrets on hover tanks swung silently. Clones open fire, and Jedi die. All across the galaxy, all at once, Jedi die. The confusion caused by Order 66 briefly caused a separatist surge on some battlefronts, but this momentum didn't last. The next day, on the orders of Darth Sidious, Newt Gunray issued a shutdown command to the Confederacy's battle droids. Around the same time, the Republic ceased to exist, transformed by the terrified, security-hungry Senate into the Galactic Empire, ruled by now Emperor Palpatine. As the entire droid army ceased to be a factor, the new Empire seized control of most of Separatist space. Many organic Separatist units kept fighting, but there was little they could do to stop the Empire from seizing their homeworlds. The Adarim sieges had fulfilled their purpose, crushing Darth Sidious's remaining enemies and handing the galaxy over to the Sith. The Clone Wars were over. The Confederacy had lost, the Republic had lost, the Jedi had lost, and above all, the galaxy had lost. Everything went according to plan. So there you have it, the full story of the Adarim sieges, the devastating final stage of the Clone Wars. But what do you think? Have you read The Essential Guide to Warfare, the guidebook we got much of our information for this video from? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.